What's up guys, it's Noah here with Custom RC Mods. Welcome back to the channel. Now in today's episode, I'm gonna try to give you five good reasons why I'm hesitant to switch to DJI Digital FPV here in 2020. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you'd know that digital FPV is the clear way of the future. And of course, like I said, DJI is the king of this realm at the moment. I think before I get too immersed in, uh, you know, dumping all that money into DJI's ecosystem, I really wanna look at all the options that are becoming available on the market. Of course, Fat Shark's Bite Frost 2.0 is coming out. I'm having a feeling that other brands like Connex might be coming back, you know, now that there's a revision and, you know, kind of revitalization in technology um, as things are progressing. However, DJI is a clear favor of most pro pilots and it's really obvious that they're not going anywhere. So why am I hesitant? Now the first reason I want to talk about is DJI as a company and honestly I have nothing bad to say about them. I've been super satisfied with all the products I've had. Most notably this Mavic Air 2 right here has been an excellent drone for all of my aerial photography needs most recently. However the entrance into the FPV world has got me a little bit skeptical and I know other people like Mr. Steel um, and a few other notable pro pilots are skeptical as well. They tend to release closed source products with a very very locked up ecosystem in a way almost like Apple versus Android. And I know that this hobby feeds off an open source ecosystem with Betaflight and all the other configurators out there, all the other technologies that are used. You really can't do a lot of modifications and customizations with their systems. And they have full control of the user experience throughout your time using like an air unit or something like that. Their configurator, you know, you can determine what goes into your future firmware updates. They can almost, almost basically stop making your drone, your air unit work um, until you get that next firmware update, which will have limited features. If they work with the FAA and this all gets deregulated and you're not allowed to fly drones anymore, just think about it. They could totally just cut off all firmware and all support for the air unit. And then you just have, you know, a paperweight that's 180 bucks. And that just is kind of concerning to me. You know, I just don't get that sense of freedom when I'm using their products, which is great for a drone. I mean, you've got a lot of technology built into this thing. And this has a lot of different applications that are different. You're flying at longer range, you're flying this in a way that might be a little bit more concerning to the FAA or other organizations. But for FPV, a hobby that feeds off of open source and open custom technologies, I just don't think that DJI initially at least was a very good fit. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the upfront cost, which is obviously very expensive, especially if you're switching from analog to digital. I've actually watched some videos where people do the math and find it cheaper just to start off digital, even then just to start off analog with some of the best analog gear. However, for me, I've already got all the analog gear and all the stuff that I've spent all that money on, the nice run cam cameras and the Rush VTXs and the Fat Shark goggles and all that stuff. And I would need to get rid of all that and switch about five or six of my rigs over to digital FPV. Now, obviously you've got the goggles, which are gonna be the most expensive, assuming you're not using the radio link as well. I'd probably just use my you know, current Radio Master TX16S with Crossfire. So goggles, $550 just for those. And then you'll need a unit in each one of those rigs. So let's say I have six that I'm gonna switch over and you're gonna be paying about $150 to $200 if you get the Cadex Vista or the DJI Air unit. So six times 200, that's $1,200 dollars just to get all my quads up there so we're looking almost at eighteen hundred dollars or so just to get my entire fleet to digital and that's not even everything if i needed uh to just go with these goggles standalone so i'd get rid of the fat sharks which is probably something i do just to obviously afford those dji digital goggles then i need an analog system too because i've got so many of these quads right here that would still have to run analog because you just can't run digital on something this small and lightweight. So I'd have to get a rapid fire and I'd have to get an adapter for my digital goggles and it would just be a whole large mess. I'm probably about two grand into that if and when I switch over to digital FPV. So that is definitely a hefty price tag and that's something that's really made me stay at analog but I know in the future I'm saving up and I think that digital might be the way to go but that's definitely kind of standing in my way. So the next thing we need to talk about is DJI Digital's strong lack of compatibility with current analog systems. And I know that when I go flying, everybody that I'm flying with at the current moment at least is flying analog as well. So if I was to switch over to digital, my digital signal would stomp over all of their analog signals and make it really hard to fly as a group with both the digital and analog. And besides that, another thing that's really wrecked my chances of getting a digital system here in the near future is just the fact that you lose 
lose all chance of spectating um, because unless you have that smart controller, you're not going to be able to output um, what you're seeing to anyone else, which is a huge deal breaker because I feel like that's where a lot of this FPV community, you know, really kind of bonds together and comes from because I'm watching someone else fly. You know, when I'm not flying, when I'm not burning my packs and crashing my quad, I'm tuning in my goggles to someone else. And if they don't have that $800, $900 analog, uh, digital FPV system, then they're not going to be able to ever spectate me again, which is kind of, you know, dumb and it, it misses the point of this entire FPV community. So unless me and all my flying buddies upgrade to digital at the exact same time, I'm kind of going to lose that community vibe that you kind of get with flying analog at the current moment. So another thing that I found really important to consider, especially for me and my flying style, is the added value that an air unit brings to each one of my rigs. Now I fly rather recklessly sometimes and I can get away with that because a lot of my rigs are $100, $150, maybe $200 with depreciation and that's fine. If my, I lose the rig, if I completely smash it to pieces or I never see it again, I, it's not the end of the world. It's not an overly expensive quad, especially if it didn't have a GoPro on it. But when you add this air unit, oftentimes you're doubling the value of the quad. So when I lose it forever, I'm going to be that much more heartbroken. It's going to be that much more of a loss for me. So that's something really to consider is that you not only are paying up more up front for this entire system, but on the back end, it's going to affect your flying because you're going to be more nervous, you know, to take risks where you might end up either crashing the quad really hard or just never seeing it again. So that's, I mean, it's really important when you think about it more, just the fact that all this money isn't necessarily protected. You're not making this investment and in knowing that, hey, my Caddx Vista on there will never get lost. It'll never get broken. You know, any of these things like that. Now, the final reason that I want to talk about is just the fact that DJI Digital FPV is not universal to the, all the quads that I have in my fleet. And I already touched on this, but not, none of my tiny whoops are going to be able to get digital FPV for the moment at least. So I'm still going to have to fly analog of some form uh, with these quads. And that's unfortunate just because these quads could almost be ones that benefit the most when I'm flying in super tight, scraggly areas with these. And I think they might be some of the most fun to fly digital FPV. But not only only just the lack of compatibility, also the size and weight restrictions of things like the Cadex Vista and the Air Unit. This Vortex 150 might actually be able to fit a Cadex Vista in it, but the Vista is far too heavy for this thing to be even any fun to fly in the end. And how about this right here? This is my Voltai Rotor Mania Reaper, and as you can see in there, I've got no room. I got barely any room to mount a little 20 by 20 Rush Tank Mini in there, but you know, a DJI Cadex Vista or any of those will not fit in this unless I upsize the standoffs. So those restrictions uh, for these quads are really going to be a deal breaker in the long run in my opinion. And those are my five reasons why I'm sticking with analog for the time being. But like I said, I'm fully convinced that digital FPV is the way of the future and I'm starting to get ready to make that transition. I'm selling off some of my analog quads. So stay tuned for another video on that coming very soon. And I'm also just kind of getting all those funds in order to make that switch. So I'm ready for that next great firmware update or, you know, revision version to are things like that that would push my reasoning over the edge to go digital in my personal scenario. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you aren't already a custom RC mod subscriber, please do so. It really means a lot to me for you to show your support. Also make sure to like and comment down below if you have any questions or thoughts on this debate between digital and analog. And maybe if you just got digital FPV, how you might have been dealing with some of the situations or problems that I'm having with analog and digital at the moment. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video please go ahead check out my instagram check out my brand new discord server if you guys are into that stuff and i'll catch you guys in the next video